Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, thanks so much for listening today. Uh, you probably know this if you listen to podcasts, but your willingness to rate and review what you've just heard is a huge blessing to our ministry. Uh, really, without that, it's almost impossible for people to find us and be blessed by us. So would you take just a second to rate and review this podcast? Thank you so much. Do you remember the train accident in Spain I told you about recently, the one that happened in 2013? The train that went too fast around the corner and ended up crashing. Francisco is the name of the conductor of that train. He's the one who called for help. And after he was on the phone and he said, and he announced, I've derailed to the people he was talking to. He said, what do I do? And then he said one more thing. He said, I hope there's no one dead. But of course there were. There were 78 of them. And that's why he hasn't driven a train since. He doesn't trust himself and the train company didn't trust him either. He wasn't allowed to drive any more trains after what happened. And if we don't trust certain people with trains, does it surprise us that there are certain people God won't trust with the resources of heaven? I mean, isn't that what prayer is? It is the privilege of using the resources of heaven to change the world's direction. And who does God trust with the resources of heaven? James chapter 5, verse 16 does not say, the prayer of anyone is powerful and effective. But instead it says, the prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. Which, by the way, does not mean that the righteous person who prays will always get everything for which he's praying. Case in point, there was no one more righteous than Jesus whom we know regularly set aside time to get away from the to-dos of life so he could both listen to his father and pray to his father in heaven. And yet there was one time he asked his father to do something that never ended up happening. On Monday, Thursday, Jesus was weary, he was troubled, he was burdened. He didn't want what he knew was coming. For the same reason you wouldn't want to be in that mess of a train that flew off the tracks in Spain. The piercing sting of iron rubbing against your bones, and strangling the sensitive nerves normally protected by your skin isn't a pleasant sensation. Take this cup from me, he begged. But his father said no, because his father heard another prayer from his righteous son that evening, one that Jesus taught us to pray to. Your will be done. Your will be done. And we know he meant it. Because the next day it wasn't a train that was crumbled up in a pile of destruction. It was God's only son. It wasn't metal cars that were mangled, but the human skin he had put on. It wasn't 247 passengers screaming for help. But just one innocent man whose father answered his screams with silence, so that we could see once and for all that what God willed and wanted more than anything was you and your salvation. That's why James wants us to confess our sins to one another, in fact, so that we can remind one another that the punishment that brings us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. Or as it says in the fifth chapter of the book of Romans, through the obedience of the one man, the many are made righteous. Righteous. And whose prayers are powerful and effective? Yours are. You who are sometimes weary, burdened, broken. You who live in a world that is so troubling. And we see its pain in the eyes of our oldest adults and the most vulnerable children. We feel it in the tears that run down our skin. But God has given us a gift that does and will make an incredible difference. Are any of you in trouble today? Is anyone you love hurting? Take a moment right now, my righteous brothers and sisters, and 
pray.